Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday's wellness webinar, where today's topic is going to be looking at fast food, not so fast. My name is Katrina Francis. I'm working with ESS as a nutrition and wellbeing engagement officer. So today we are going to be focusing on what fast food is and some of the health complications of consuming too much and also helping you by thinking about tips to make healthier choices and to seek out those better options, as well as linking it back to mindful eating and sustainability. So first of all, what is fast food? So fast food is easily prepared food, which is usually seen to be taken away, but it can also be served in snack bars and restaurants as a quick meal. So for example, if we take Nando's, Nando's um, under usual living situations, we might go there for a sit down meal with a main, a side and a drink compared to Subway, which we may have on the go um, and taking it away. And often fast food is seen to be cheap, convenient and unhealthy, but there are lots of other healthier recipe developments going on behind the scenes. And this is due to the government's drive to try and reduce obesity in the nation. So just how popular is fast food? So it's suggested that Gen Z and Millenniums are the group which are most likely to eat out. And it's suggested that this is once or twice a month. Despite the obesity drive in trying to reduce obesity, there are more takeaways on the high street. This includes chip shops, burger bars and pizza places, and this accounts for 26% of all eateries in England. And also um, in 2018, it was suggested that on average, an individual spent £265 on takeaway meals. So it is interesting, it is popular and it is on the rise. And it would be interested in a couple of years time to look back at this period where we've been in lockdown to see if these are similar or whether they're increased or decreased. Now, you might be thinking that during today's webinar, I'm going to be preaching that all fast food should be avoided always, but this is not necessarily the case. When we look at the Eat Well Guide, which is set out to look to um, provide us with a healthy, balanced diet, we can see in the bottom left corner processed foods. And this is where fast food fits in. So this is where the sauces, the crisps, the chocolate, the biscuits and so on are. So fast food definitely does have a place within our diet. But when we do consume it, we need to be having it in moderation and as a tree. And it should be not be consumed every day. So as I go through today's presentation, just remember that, that it should always be in moderation. And now why should it be in moderation? And the reason is that it can be high in certain nutrients, which when we consume too much of them, can be detrimental to our health. So it can be high in energy and calories and fat, which can lead to weight gain. And then it can have that domino effect and lead to multiple multiple of other health complications too. Behind saturated fat, which can lead to a rise in blood cholesterol and risk of heart disease. Can be high in salt, which can increase our risk of blood pressure and treble our risk of heart disease and stroke. And finally, it can also be high in added sugar, which can increase our risk of diabetes and tooth decay. Along with being quite high in some of these nutrients, they can be low in other vital vitamins, minerals, fibre and antioxidants too. So the bottom line is, is that too much fast food um, can increase our risk of obesity and be harmful for our health. And not only will we see some of those longer term implications of consuming too much fast food, but we may also see some short term symptoms and side effects too. And that can include feeling lethargic as we're not fueling our bodies with all the correct nutrients which it needs. This can not only affect us physically but mentally, so it can lead to cognitive impairment, mental health decline and so on. Also due to the lack of fibre, it can lead to constipation and bloating. Studies have also shown that in, um, fast food can lead to increased inflammation which um, is shown up in some chronic diseases such as heart disease and so on. We can see a blood sugar spike, which if not controlled, can lead to type 2 diabetes. And you may also see that your skin begins to break out, become spotty, um, 
and our skin begins to deteriorate due to the lack of vitamins and minerals. And finally, we can experience tooth decay. So first of all, we're going to look at the health complications of having too many calories within these fast foods. So first of all, it's important to mention calories are vital for our bodies. We do need them to keep us alive, for our heart to keep pumping and beating, for our hair and nails to grow. But the problem arises when we're consuming too many calories, as this can cause a positive energy balance. And this is where we are consuming too many calories compared to what our body is using to stay alive and to be physically active, and it can lead to weight gain and storage of fat. And as I said, it has that domino effect and it can lead to multiple other health complications too. So we've got heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, certain cancers, in particular breast and colon, type 2 diabetes, and so on. A common issue in, with our energy balance and calorie consumption is, off, is that we often underestimate the amount of calories which are actually in our foods and overestimate the amount of calories which we burn while we're exercising. And this is where we can cause that imbalance and cause um, and lead to that weight gain. So I've just got a very short activity just to highlight this. And as I show each food, I would like you to try and guess how many minutes or hours it takes for you to burn off this food. So first of all, we have a Big Mac, which is 508 calories. To burn this off or to maintain an energy balance, we would need to be doing 58 minutes of jogging. And again, you may want to consider this wouldn't be eaten within isolation. If you have it with a portion of chips, a fizzy drink, all of the calories add up on top of that. Next up, we have a medium pepperoni pizza, 1,608 calories. To maintain an energy balance, we would need to be walking for six hours and 42 minutes. Realistically, do we have this amount of time within a day? to burn off that extra calories that we're consuming. And again, we've got to consider perhaps what you'd have for breakfast, lunch, and any snacks in between leading up to this meal. And then finally, we've got a large portion of fries, 444 calories. And to burn this off, we would need to be doing 50 minutes of cycling. It is so tempting to go ex to go large for an extra 30 or 40 p, but we've got to also consider that it's going to be higher in calories too. The bottom line here is that most fast foods are quite energy dense, meaning they have a lot of calories in them, but they provide very little nutritional value. And um, so not many vitamins, minerals and other nutrients. So we're going to look at the health complications of consuming too much fat within our fast food. So it used to be the trans fats, which the enemy seems to be in our foods due to the health complications related to them. But in 2008, these were banned from UK food manufacturers. Now what we've got to look out for is the saturated fats within our foods. And these can come from foods such as processed and fatty meats. So it might be the pepperami or the salami, which you place onto your pizzas. Pastry, so it might be sausage rolls, mayonnaise and cheese, which you find in burgers. And we should be having these in moderation because they can have an impact on our heart health. And now we've just got a slide as a saturated fat check to show us how much saturated fat is in some of our sparse foods. And it is recommended that a UK individual should be consuming no more than 20 grams of saturated fat per day. First of all, we have a cheese and tomato pizza. This was a medium size. It's got 140% of your daily recommended saturated fat intake. So that is way above what we should be consuming within a whole day. Pizzas are likely to be high because of the amount of cheese on them, but we can try and reduce the amount of saturated fat by perhaps going for a flatbread, a smaller option, or having half and saving the other half for another day. A double cheeseburger has 60% of your daily recommended saturated fat intake. So we, again, we can reduce this by just going single. So we're removing a patty, removing the cheese, which will half it. 
Or there are alternatives. We could go for six chicken nuggets. Um, going for white meats, vegetarian options or fish will lower the saturated fat intake. So where we can perhaps opt for those options. Next up, we have a spicy Italian Subway with 55% of your recommended saturated fat intake. Subways are, ten, are seen to be perhaps the healthier options as you can bulk them out with salad and so on. But the choice of meats within this, the salami, the pepperami, the bacon, increases that. But again, there are always better options. We can go for that white meat, turkey breast and ham to lower it. Next up, we have one chicken thigh from KFC, which perhaps you may see as part of a meal. We wouldn't just have one. We may have it part of a meal of two, three, along with chips and so on. But just one of those has 20.5%. This will be high because it's the thigh. It has the skin on it, as well as it being deep fried. So it's naturally going to be quite high in saturated fat. Again, healthy option you may want to consider a fillet burger. This has got almost half the amount of saturated fat and you could see it to be as more as could see it to be more as a meal rather than just part of a meal. And then finally, we have a cheese and onion bake. 80% of your daily recommended saturated fat intake. And actually something like this from Greg's, you might just have as a snack on the go, but we really have to consider this is a large amount of or large percentage of the recommended daily. Um, and everything from Greg's is going to be quite high because of the pastry and so on. So just think about the healthy options you can be making to try and reduce the saturated fat content. Next up, we're going to look at the health complications of too much added sugar. And there are two types of sugar, natural sugar, which is found within fruits, vegetables, starchy carbohydrates and milk products. And these are completely OK to be consuming as a healthy, balanced diet as they provide us with other vitamins and minerals and fibre and so on. But it's the added sugar that we need to be careful about because they're very energy dense and they don't provide us with much else. They don't provide us with any of those nutritious goods. And it is recommended that adults consume no more than 30 grams of added sugar per day. And this is because it can increase our risk of diabetes, obesity and tooth decay. Now, the biggest contributors for sugar within our fast food are from the drinks, the desserts and the sauces. And again, I've just gone to highlight some common items from a fast food menu which have added sugar in. So first of all, we have a sweet curry dip, has nine grams of sugar. Tomato ketchup, 4.7 grams. And this is just for the usual sachets that you may get from fast food restaurants. So we can see that sauces tend to be high in sugar. We can try and reduce this by asking for it on the side so that you can control the amount that you put on. Coca-Cola known for being very high in sugar, 42 grams, and an Oasis, 17 grams of sugar. Again, we can try and reduce this by going for no added sugar or zero or diet varieties where possible. An apple pie, 9.5 grams, and a Maltese's McFlurry, 34 grams and these we've just got to be careful with as they may still contain natural sugars from the apple and from the dairy product in the ice cream. And then finally the health complications of having too much salt. So the government guidelines suggest that we consume no more than six grams of salt per day and this is because it can increase our risk of high blood pressure and treble your risk of heart disease and stroke. And in the UK, on average, we're consuming more than this at on average 8.4 grams per day. And this is the main reason for this is because actually we don't realise the amount of salt which is already in the foods that we buy off the shelves, as well as any salt that you add to it. So again, just a couple of fast food items which have salt in. First of all, we have a ham and cheese toasty from Costa, 1.3 grams. You might be surprised by this, but naturally bread, cheese and processed meats have salt in. So actually, if you were to make your own sandwich, you might be surprised to think it is quite similar. We've got a Nando's three chicken thighs, one gram of salt. And again, a um, 
Domino's American hot pizza, 8.8 .8 grams. So not only are you going over the recommended maximum for saturated fat, but also for salt as well. So we do really need to try and rein in on sides of pizzas, sharing and going for the better options where we can. And again, that pepperami, that meat will be high in the salt and the saturated fat. So opting for other options on top if we can. So now we know that there are health complications of consuming too much fast food. We do want to also help you to give us up your our, and we're going to give you our top tips for making healthier choices and to help you pick that better option. Again, even when we're doing this, we do need to consider that we are having it within moderation still. But first of all, it's to try and include at least one of your five a day. So by adding vegetables onto your pizza, adding salad into your subs, making sure you really bulk them out with those vegetables can add in a balance. We can think about the eat well guide. We can ensure we're getting those fruits and vegetables in. And again, we're consuming those vitamins and minerals which are vital for us. Next up is be sensible for sources. So as we've seen, sources can be high in salt, sugar, saturated fat and calories. It is the same for salad dressings, although it seems to be perhaps a healthier option, they can be high in salt um, and sugar. So ask for it on the side and therefore you can control it or ask for it without. Read the menu for the cooking method. So as I've already mentioned, to lower saturated fat, you might want to go for the white meat options, fish or veggie options. But you can also look out for the cooking method. So instead of going for something which is fried, Go for, a, go for a grilled option instead to minimise any added fats. Watch your portion sizes. So we don't need to be tempted to go large. The larger we go, the more calories, the more nutrients that are going to be in there. Just have it within moderation, choose small and be really mindful with what you're choosing. And also plan ahead. So actually knowing that next Friday, I am going to have a takeaway this is what I'm going to have. Think about how you can make it healthier and also think about the amount of calories that it's going to consume. And this way you can plan out your day before. So whether what you're going to be having for breakfast and lunch and any snacks in between to control your calories and also to think about can you increase the amount of physical activity that you're actually doing to balance that out again. Also, you might want to consider being wise on sides and choose zero calorie beverages. So I've done a comparison of two meals here. So the first meal we have is a double cheeseburger, a medium fries and a classic Coca-Cola. And we can see that across the board, quite high in calories, got saturated fat in there, lots of sugars and some salt as well. We can change this to be a lot healthier by going for a single cheeseburger. So again, we can see really reduce the amount of calories in there, half the amount of saturated fat and a reduction in sugar and salt too. Instead of going for a medium fries, we could perhaps go for a side salad, making sure we're getting those vegetables in, reducing the amount of calories. The sugar has increased, but like I said, that's going to be to do with the dressing. So if you ask for the dressing on the side, that will be near to none. And then finally, it is going for those zero calorie beverages, no added sugar ones, where we can really reduce the number of calories and sugar. So as we can see, meal one, quite high in calories, saturated fat, salt and sugar. Just by making small changes, thinking about what you could change it to, can really reduce the amount of calories to half, um, saturated fat, salt and sugar. So just be mindful of what you choose to go on the side of your dishes um, as it will add up to the add up more to the calories and also think about the drinks. So where we can water, fruit juices, zero calorie beverages and so on. So hopefully now you um, are more equipped, you're a little bit more knowledge, you've got some better ideas of how to make more mindful choices when you do eat out and when you do have fast food. But we also need to consider mindful eating. And this is because we tend to eat mindlessly when we do consume fast food. Firstly, it's because it has the word fast within the um, title and also with the quick service, it's on the go, convenient food um, and also 
usually it's quite cheap so you do tend to just gobble it up without thinking about it so we do want to try and incorporate mindful eating into um eating out and this is when we pay attention to the food that you eat so it helps us recognize and cope with any emotions and physical sensations so it allows you to recognize when you do feel full and when actually you've had enough this allows us to not overeat digest our food better and enjoy our food more and maintain a healthy balance and just some top tips to um, consider mindfulness when eating out or on the go with fast food is to first of all portion it up on your plate this way you're going to relate it more to a meal you're going to think yep sit down at a table with your cutlery if it's um cutlery food rather than finger food and recognize it as a meal as you would with any other meal try and eat slower so actually chewing thoroughly thinking about all of the tastes and the textures of your food so try and forget that convenient on the go let's gobble it all in one think about it as a normal meal and then finally we also need to just think about sustainability of fast food and often it seems to be quite negative but we have seen fast food chains moving away from that low quality meat at affordable prices and mass packaging so to begin with mcdonald's is a good example of this they use 100 percent british and irish irish beef they're working at the moment with 20,000 farmers supplying them with quality cuts of burger and they're also approved by farm assurance schemes so things such as red tractor so we can know that they're coming from good places they are using beef which comes from the forequarter and the flank which is seen to be a little bit better quality and also a good thing about McDonald's is that they're cooked between two hot plates rather than adding oil so that as well is going to reduce the saturated fat content although it's still quite high they are thinking about those healthier options and being a bit more sustainable mass packaging so fast food packaging accounts for 10 percent of all waste produced but actually we need to educate ourselves a little bit more about what is recyclable rather than just throwing it into the waste as we aren't always necessarily sure with what is sustainable and so on so just a quick one here fish and chip paper unfortunately not because of the oils which have been soaked up makes it um no longer recyclable indian foil cartons they can be recycled if you give them a rinse making sure there's no food left in them chinese plastic tubs again similar making sure they've been rinsed get rid of any excess food and chuck them in the recycling cups whether this be coffee cups or soft drink cups you do need to check with your local area whether they accept these if not if you return them to the store they can dispose of them properly or even better getting yourself a reusable coffee cup pizza boxes again it's something that you need to check with within your local area but if you remove all the insides then it's a lot better and then the one that's not recyclable is kebab polystyrene packages as well so do just again don't forget about this do still be careful that um we can recycle and don't contribute to um waste and so on so just a quick summary for us today so first of all just to highlight that not all fast food is bad for us there's always that option to make things healthier um, by looking at the calories saturated fat salt and sugar you can seek those healthier options and make those better choices even when we're doing that we still need to be consuming them within moderation that is something that i can't emphasize not enough it does need to be in smaller amounts and in as treats obviously don't forget to eat mindfully and um, throughout and to check the packaging for recycling as well thank you very much for listening today just like to point out a few more things before we end so first of all is our monthly newsletter goes out every month with um, new nutrition and well-being initiatives which are going on throughout the month if you would like to sign up for that and get them sent straight to your inbox please just give us an email it's ess.wellness at compass group compass hyphen group dot co dot uk and also check out our tiktok instagram and youtube we post weekly and monthly videos on there across all of them um, to give you tips and tricks and um, all things health and well-being 
And finally, our inbox is always open, not only just to sign up for our newsletter, but also to answer any health and wellbeing related queries. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.